Excellence. Um, C'est un très grand is a huge pleasure to welcome you in Chatham House today. Uh, Her His Excellency Vital Pillenbe, Vice uh, Prime Minister and Minister of Economics of uh, Congo RDC. We welcome you and your delegation warmly, and we also have the Minister of uh, Industry with us, as well as the Ambassador of uh, the Democratic Republic of Congo, and our ambassador in Kinshasa is also around the table. Welcome to all of you. Thank you very much for being here today for this private round table taking place until 3 p.m. His Excellency will first make a speech about the progress achieved by the current government, the priorities in terms of reforms and preparation of the elections and priorities for conflict resolution and in national and in regional and international engagement. And then the participants around the table will have the floor for questions. May. Um, and I should reinforce from the beginning that this is uh, a round table in French and English, and uh, it was simultaneous translation throughout. Um, the, um, the, uh, the recording um, of uh, the event is not authorized without prior authorization, but you're very, very welcome to tweet using hashtag CHAfrica. And please could everyone uh, either turn their mobiles off or put them on silence. Um, I'm just going to say very briefly at the, at the beginning that His Excellency and his delegation do need to leave on time at three. So we're going to try and keep to that schedule. Um, so it'd be great if all the questions that come, and there'll be many questions, I'm sure, are very precise and to the point, and we'll try and get through everyone in the time available. Um, Excellence, vous avez la parole. Your Excellency, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chairman of the session. I would like to thank all participants to this round table. I will be happy to introduce briefly my country. The Democratic Republic of Congo, the opportunities this country offers to national and uh, foreign investors, and also mentioned the preparation of elections. And as the chairman say, I will also talk about conflict resolution. The Democratic Republic of Congo is a country situ located at the center, the core of, of Africa, 2.3 million square kilometers. And it is at the crossroads of basically all of the sub-regional organizations in uh, uh, Southern Africa, but also East Africa with the community, economic community of uh, Eastern Africa country, but also the the community of the states of the Great Lakes. So it has a geostrategic position. And thanks to that, it is also linked to Europe, America, and Asia. It's really at the core, at the center, and also from the south to uh, Europe. Its uh, position is therefore really strategic. This was just a, a preliminary introduction. What's the situation of the economy in our country? If you can say that in 2019, when Felicia Tsitsikedi came to power, macroeconomic data were not as promising as they are today. We can, for example, say that the inflation rate we was 6.1%, but we've already gone higher in 2023, we are now at 8.2%. If we look at the uh, foreign exchange reserves, when we 
came into power, we had 150 million foreign exchange only. In 2020, 1.5 billion. And in 2022, we reached 1 billion, sorry, 2 billion. Point three, and in 2023, we already have 4.5 billion uh, foreign exchange reserves in US dollars. Regarding opportunities, we can note today that this country offer many business opportunities. First of all, in hydroelectric, hydroenergy, with 400 and 844, with 44,000 megawatts that are exploited in Inga. And Inga is uh, the large project, the major project for the whole of Africa to for electrification and industrializations. And if it is connected to the Aswan Dam in Egypt, we will be able to provide energy as far as uh, Southeast Asia and including uh, Southern Europe as well, and Mediterranean Europe. So there is a huge potential for industrialization, not only in the country itself, but the, for the whole of Africa. And if we add other energy resources, we have uh, many rivers, affluence of the Congo River, 4,700 kilometers long, and it is uh, the most powerful river in the world. And in lengthwise, it is the third main river after the Amazon and the Nile. So if we add these additional energy resources, we have uh, 100,000 megawatt uh, potential. According to the studies that have been done, 76,000 of villages have at least one energy resource is non, not exploited, but uh, that could be enough for electrification. So today, we are concerned by a sovereign realizing a food sovereignty because we have faced with a paradox. We consume what we don't produce and we produce what we don't consume. We are today with the president and his government trying to uh, exploit with a detailed plan the land reserves that we have in our country which are estimated to 80 million of uh, uh, hectares and 40 million of hectares that can be uh, irrigated. If we use it in the same way as uh, developed countries, we would be able to produce uh, 2 billion of uh, food. That would be enough to solve uh, the uh, food insecurity in the world. So it is the real paradox that we have. We have the means, but we cannot feed our own population. And we have to import 90% of uh, food to feed our population. To solve this paradox, we have a, a huge project to integrate 145 territories. We need to build infrastructure roads. I will not give you the exact number of kilometers that have been already built over the past four years, but it is progressing. And we've decided to create economic, uh, special economic zones that give advantages and benefits to the investors. And I'm very pleased to have with me the Minister of Industry because it's his specialty. The economic, special economic area of Kinshasa Maluku is already in operation, and some industries and investors uh, are already using it. We have some produce that is being 100% produced uh, by Congolese uh, entrepreneurs, and uh, we can give you more examples during the discussion. We uh, say, however, that the different provinces have to specialize. Some can specialize in corn, other in beans, other in manioc. And we uh, have tried a new experiment last year after uh, the start of the war in Ukraine. 
we've uh, uh, cultivated 2,500 2, hectares of wheat. And the yield was very interesting. The wheat was of high quality. And this year, we cultivated 10,000 hectares of wheat. And we also proved that wheat can be cultivated in some other areas. And unfortunately, that effort was interrupted due to some conflicts. Regarding mining, you know very well that when we speak about uh, the TRC, we think about mining. And, but we know that mining are resources that are not renewable. So uh, one day, the mines won't be there anymore. However, the land will always be there. So we have to be careful and uh, not do like uh, when the Belgian colonists were here and they used up all the, all the coal and then they didn't know what else to do. So in the economic model that we've built, we want uh, the land resources to be used in a way to finance the development. And uh, the um, future is not in, in mining, uh, but in uh, the rural areas uh, where 75 percent of the population live. So we can't speak about sustainable development if we don't talk about rural development. And rural development means that other developments are required in order to keep the populations in the villages, particularly schooling, for example, but also also hospitals to care for the population, uh, water, electricity, and basic infrastructure. Uh, all of that is required. We have uh, a road infrastructure now, more than 1,500 kilometers in Congo, but only 2% are really usable. So it is, everything has to be done there. The, what we call the national interest routes, uh, roads are 500,000 kilometers. Only 10% have been upgraded. So there again, a lot of opportunities to, to improve. In our country and within the government, we've created a, a special workforce for business climate in order to uh, entice foreign investment. And we have uh, the same workforce within the prime minister uh, group, cabinet, and also an institution for the promotion of investment, the national institution, uh, the national agency for the promotion of investment and appeal. But all of these can only be achieved if the main attributes of the state uh, are stable, i.e. a completely professionalized army, a professional police force as well to guarantee order and security of the population and the, the goods, and a um, fair justice that is uh, not equal justice and not justice for the rich and justice for the poor. And we also need uh, an administration that is efficient and works well and uh, regional and international cooperation solid and, and based on international relations. All of this can only be achieved if we continue our fight against the corruption, embezzlement of public funds, and all the issues uh, that are faced by economic actors, national and international uh, actors. And the Minister of Economics has uh, launched some reforms with the Ministry of Finance and Budget, particularly regarding the multiplicity of uh, Taxes. There are so many that all of this had to be uh, um, reorganized. We've also taken measures to encourage people to produce in the country to be more competitive against uh, Asia because uh, we are really a, 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 a country that is attracting uh, Asia, and we're not against that, but we have the land, we have the rivers, uh, we're happy to give opportunities uh, to Asians, Europeans, and Americans to come and develop with their technologies all these activities for our population. The 
Democratic Republic of Tongo, uh, as you say, is uh, approaching election time. And I would like to give you some concrete examples. And I will leave you the text of my statement that will be translated into, into English. So we have started our effort to um, take up the challenge of uh, modernizing and transforming our economy in our country. We have uh, recently, with the president, inaugurated uh, an institution created by Niger Kamin, a mine, to produce an, uh, copper and uh, other germanium. And nowadays, uh, we commercialize 30% of germanium, which is uh, very important for the production of semiconductors. Another priority is uh, to fight against uh, the mafia activities. In the past, our country was not considered as a uh, um, big producer of uh, cobalt, when in fact uh, we know that we have a lot of cobalt. So we have uh, to look at these uh, uh, statistics that say that we are the first producer, uh, producer, and we hope this will indeed be the case. We've created uh, um, a factory to melt gold in the north of our country. We have also taken some actions, strategic actions, for cobalt, uh, as we are the first con producing countries. For copper, we have the second producer after Chile. Lithium, we have uh, uh, resources, unparalleled resources. And we have a lot more other resources that are used for the construction of electric batteries. So we are at the core of the energy transition efforts, and we want to go in the sense of uh, cooperation with uh, African partners, but also with uh, uh, other operators from other continents in order to save our planet that is today threatened. Because we mustn't forget that we're also the second forest in the world after uh, Brazil. We have a regular rainfall. And so we have fantastic water resources, 53% of all the water in Africa, 13% of soft water of the world. Uh, so our country is a real paradise that has been um, transformed into hell due to bad governance. So the challenge now is uh, to transform again this hell into the paradise, the potential paradise it can be. Regarding elections, we are preparing them. We're enrolling um, the electorate in several territories, Beni Butembo in, in North Kiru, where there is uh, war and conflict, in Masisi, Niragongo. We haven't done yet uh, the uh, uh, enrollment there, but we know that it, that is possible because that was done in 2018 so that they will also be able to exercise their right to vote their representatives at all levels. Of course, uh, the political fight will be intense. This is often the case in Africa, but also elsewhere, where we have uh, several sides that are present. And unfortunately, sometimes that can come with violence before the elections, during the elections, but particularly after the elections. With this fourth time, this fourth experience of organizing elections, uh, I've uh, worked on the peace process in uh, the country before becoming the president of the National Assembly, we will endeavor to create cohesion at the national level with the Catholic Church and with the protest Protestant Church, which are the main organizations representing civil society, but also with the opposition in order to um, have a peaceful elections. So the opposition has uh, made a lot of requirements to ensure uh, that uh, there was uh, no rigging of the elections and to ensure that 
the law if the election doesn't come out for the current president will be respected. Uh, the opposants have been received by uh, the CENI. Uh, you know that at the beginning the um, opposition was saying that they will not take part to these elections because uh, they were uh, not serious. But now there are more than 30 candidates, some of them being very uh, well known. They took part to the last elections. And we think that is uh, a way that uh, shows that these elections are perfectly uh, uh, credible. And we have now to give uh, the opportunity to all these candidates uh, to uh, have a campaign to defend uh, their uh, programs so that the best one wins. Um, before I arrived here, I heard that there are already some of the main opponents that are um, uh, traveling for the campaign, even though the campaign has not officially started. But it's great. Anybody can, can start and, and uh, uh, run a campaign, and the people will choose. Uh, um, pol police will be ready to deploy to ensure safety of the uh, electoral booths, electoral po polls. Um, what is the issue is the infrastructure, because the road, as I've said, are in a bad state, and we will have to use other means to deploy the electoral uh, equipment. But we're still optimistic, and we think this election can take place in a transparent way and will be win fairly by the best candidate. I do not want to be too long or enter uh, into details, because from what I've heard um, from other Chair, Mr. Bob, I think we will listen to a few questions and try to answer before we go to our next appointment. So I've tried to give you uh, 30 minutes for these questions. Thank you very much Thank for you. listening to me. A very good overview and gives us a good platform for questions. I'd suggest we group them in threes, and um, it's on the record. I should have said at the beginning, this is on. Uh, a meeting on the record. So, questions? Lady on uh, my right, first of all. Well, please, please. Yes, and we'll, we'll make a note. Microphone. Is that good? Hi, my name is Ma Aku Yatma. I'm from SNBC, Sumitomo so Sudan. Thank you, Your Excellency, for that very comprehensive overview from which we could understand the different areas that your government and country is trying to push broader development. And amongst the many areas you outlined, food security, infrastructure, energy, mining, broader economic development, what is the priority, you would say, of the government? And together with that, is that a priority that is shared as a national consensus, or would it change with the, depending on the next government? Thank you. So we'll go to the other side of the hall. Gentleman on the left. Yeah, thank you, Excellency. My name is Silvano Zuekesa. I'm from King's College, London. I uh, just have one question in terms of the security situation in the country. Do you foresee a scenario with the events happening in the East that the elections can be postponed? And in your government going forward, same question to the lady has asked, especially in terms of the security priorities of the, the role of the external actors, and I'm talking of the East African community, the MONUSCO, SADC. Do you foresee a change? Because already there are murmurs that MONUSCO and ESRF must leave by December. Do you have an alternative to fill the vacuum, or is it just political chatter? Thank you. Mm. Thank you for your presentation. I'm Onzong Udit, former professor in the Mimbashi 
University, and I'm currently an international consultant. The national press, but also international press, mentions that the elections will not take place in December, as it's been planned. You have mentioned a problem that you said is a small problem, a small issue, which is logistics, which will be very difficult to overcome in the short time frame we have left by December. So there is rumor that there is an agreement in the political class to postpone once again, uh, similar to what happened in 2002 or 2005, a transition that will deny to the population the right to freely choose its representatives and contribute to worse of the issue of legitimacy of the institutions. Uh, what is your reaction to all this? And I have a second question, if, if I may. And I had a s uh, second question very rapidly about the mining resources. As you very well said, there are finite resources. What is the vision of the government? so that these resources could be used to, for the Republic to come out of the current uh, uh, dire economic situation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Bob. Thank you very much for all your questions. I think that the priority of the government, as I said earlier, is to develop ways, um, fair ways to develop uh, all of Congo. So it's part, uh, there are 145 territories. These are uh, territorial entities. So it means that each of these entities has got a model which is around agriculture. with the aim of transforming agriculture. So this is quite a simple one. To each of these territories, we give a certain number of acres that they can, uh, on which they can grow crops. And there have been studies and some provinces have already started. But we know that uh, before that, we need to open roads that lead to the fields to the main roads, which in return also have uh, to be repaired. So the government, in the case of this partnership between the public and private sector, has uh, already planned to do so. I can give you a document which uh, would uh, give you a good idea of what is done, what needs to be done. And this is quite extraordinary what we're doing at the moment. So as I said, this model also takes into account the fact that we need to have uh, basic social infrastructures. What I mean by that is I need, we need to do that around uh, sectors, important sectors around electricity, because electricity enables us to pump the water, to give electricity and water to houses. So it's not only the electricity which is produced by dams or plants, also we have uh, wind farms. And as we said around this uh, huge project, we have created specific uh, economical areas. So the state is here to give the rules to protect the investors who in return create jobs. So the main priority is actually improving the way that uh, Congolese uh, people 
live so that all those who want to invest in Congo, whether they are from Congo or outside Congo, can do so. So uh, to answer the question of the gentleman from King's College, so you mentioned security and insecurity as being a problem in the East, but we also have insecurity in the West as well around Kinshasa. We know of uh, these issues. So there are some parts which are of uh, the territories which are part of Congo, Monusco, for example. And uh, I had uh, signed some agreements with the Monit, which has become Monusco at the time, so it was 24 years ago. And at the time, it was already clear there were rebels which were not as strong as Monusco, and it's still the case now. Without Monusco, it would have been worse. This is why the Congolese army is doing their job. But what we want is peace with all of our neighbors. We know that the vision of the president well, when he started being a president, so he went to see the neighbors, Burundi, Tanzania, Zambia, also uh, Angola, Uganda, and uh, Sudan, as well as the Republic of Congo, so that everyone knows that we are in the center of Africa, of course, So we need to really boost all uh, Africa. And we know that um, we need to elevate and we need to do more so that everyone can actually go forward as well. So we need sovereignty and we also need to ensure everybody's rights. Therefore, it's not the first experience, and uh, there was uh, no election since 2006, which was totally uh, done in a pacific way. But what we really want in the second mandate would be uh, to manage this problem of insecurity in the east and west of the country. Again, our first plan that we suggested to everyone was to go out of this crisis situation in a pacific way. And again, this has been done by the government, but unfortunately, the following operations is uh, beyond our control because we asked rebels to stop advancing where they are. So as we said, it becomes some territories becomes a no man's land and do not belong to anyone and this is not acceptable. So we have this problem currently, but we are not going to postpone the elections. We are determined and our president is determined as well and our prime minister to be able to organize the elections as, per, as uh, said in December. Also, Mr. Mozambe asked a question. So you are an international consultant, you said, and today what you said is that in the international and national and domestic press, we are talking more and more of uh, postpone, postponing the elections. So the idea would be that, uh, so this is what you said, the, um, um, the different parties will uh, would decide and will prevent the population from deciding should the election not be organized as planned. So our government wants for these elections to be organized and for the best to win. 
So may the best win, not necessarily us, but we want these elections to be fully transparent so that the Congolese people can choose what they want. You also uh, talked about logistics, I believe. So of course, logistics are difficult to organize. But what can we do if we can't spend what we wanted? We have planned on planning on spending five billions, and we want again for these elections to be organized. And this is the will of the Congolese people. So I can tell you that um, everything is being done and we are in touch of the people who are necessary to organize all this. We also have, so the second part of your question regarded what should be done if you know that uh, the mining resources are not limited. We think that it's actually a good thing because we are happy to say that we are rich, but in reality, we are poor. This is quite a paradox. So today, to give you a broad idea, so according to the American University of Columbia, they are there would be 24,000 billion, especially with uh, some projects with six kinds of ore. So maybe Congo would even be richer than other countries. And we are currently discussing with uh, Somalia, for example. And the model that we would like to use would be the one to use because you know that we got independent in 1960 and we shouldn't forget that we also need an economical uh, independence because at the time we were colonized and before that there was uh, the king of Belgium Leopold II and you needed to produce coffee you need to produce various resources, but there were 80 years of uh, being colonized with Belgium, and you know perfectly what happened. Agriculture is at uh, the foundation of the various associations and companies, and in 1960, Congo was at the same level as Canada and as South Africa and South Korea today. So it's because in 1960, we only had 25 academists, among which lots of philosophers. So accumulating capital, well, we know that today we need to start again with mining, and we need also for agriculture, actually, to be reboosted and also really want to have a green economy today. We have several opportunities and we need to build up and also everything is, is open and uh, to all of our European friends. Actually, this could be a solution Especially, this could be a solution to give jobs because we can think of those who migrate and uh, who want to come to Europe because if we can offer these jobs, well, if Congo has got um, all of these possibilities, then we would need to build up 5,000 kilometers worth of train tracks. Also, we could... Uh, actually worked on the lakes that would be available and also open roads, 500,000 kilometers, oh, sorry, 150,000. 
kilometers of roads so that we can really take advantage of mining, but also of all there is, so that it's a benefit to investors, but also to our country. And we are going to create everything to do so. I really believe that uh, our Vice Minister, the, the Minister of Economy and the Minister of Industry agrees with me. So maybe the Minister of Industry can correct me or add some details if I haven't said everything. Thank you very much for your questions. Anyway, if there are other questions, of course, do not hesitate. Um, and of course, we'd be delighted if the uh, Honourable Minister wanted to, to answer some of the next questions. But can we keep them really got to be very, very short? The gentleman on my right, first of all. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Excellence. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. I'm the first uh, councillor for the Belgian Embassy in London. So, first of all, I wanted to tell you that uh, Belgium is reattached to the uh, territorial integrity of uh, the Democratic Republic of Congo. And also, I wanted really to insist on what you said, just to be a solution in your, to find solutions in your country for climate change and also to work on the leadership, especially with the president. And also you've increased the budget. Sorry, two questions. She can be brief. So first of all, could you tell us how you would plan to have the MONUSCO leave because uh, they are logistic uh, issues, of course, and we know that in the past, the helicopters of the MONUSCO helped in organizing these elections. And also, you also talked of uh, the help of uh, uh, President Sekedi to also uh, give a hand to your neighbors. And what do you think, for example, Rwanda, and what do you think could be a solution for collaboration with your neighbors? Your Excellency. Um, just very, very briefly, I think it's been touched on before, but just to add on, um, DR Congo has a, a national ad adaptation to climate change plan. Um, if you could perhaps say a little bit more um, about that. And I'm also Zimbabwean, so just to wish you all the best, a peaceful election. We've just had ours. <laughs> so that counts. And, so and do, you. Want, do you want to add what are your priorities for COP28 <laughs> <laughs> uh, as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's maybe. Well. Yeah. Merci. Uh, no. Yes, uh, uh, Minister, very uh, welcome. I'm High Commissioner for Uganda. Just wanted to welcome and to thank you for your comments. I think we know where we are and what we're working very closely with you to thank you and to convey our thanks to your uh, government as well. So we're worried about some of the issues right now, but just. Uh, I think you're answering some of the questions that were already on the table. So thank you so much, and it's welcome to London. Thank you, Governor. Thank you. Uh, I think a good line of questions there. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur André. Thank you very much for, to Mr. André. So our country is not only uh, one solution for climate change is one country which can be a solution for the main uh, challenges for the uh, all humanity. Uh, the, for example, in terms of food scarcity, because we know that there is a deficit of a few billion dollars, and uh, I've shown you that today. There are a billion, billions of people which uh, can't be fed properly. And as I said, it's like for China, so we have the nutrition and so the budget of the state has doubled, but also the GDP, because when we arrived in power, it was around $30 billion for GDP. 
and we are around 70 billion dollars worth of GDP. So you need to go step by step. Today, uh, America told us that we were going forward for economic governance as well as um, in the um, complying with human rights as well. So, the MONUSCO indeed um, will go away, but it will be done properly. So, there's no need to have MONUSCO in the central part of our country. There's no need. Why should we have 20,000 men here just for North Kivu? So, we need for those troops to <coughs> go away progressively. And little by little, our country will restore uh, their sovereignty and Monesco can then leave. Because it, the aim is not for it to stay forever. So there are some <coughs> efforts being made so that we can really have a good agreement with the MONESCO, but also have alternative solutions. So if New York doesn't agree with the MONESCO to help us to uh, really deploy the electoral kits, then we will need to, to find other solutions. We will need maybe to give them to the airport agents, and we will have anyway some money because it will be financed 100% by our country. So adapting to climate change, yes, of course. We need to adapt, and this is why our policymakers know that we are part of this solution. Therefore, we have to protect forests and also think of alternative resources for energy so that uh, we can heat houses, for example. So this is part of a whole program that is currently being deployed in the country. Also, from what you said, Mrs. I, Commissioner, well, there are not uh, conflicts going on forever, and I'm convinced that sooner or later we will find solutions. Who could believe today that France and Germany could uh, form such a couple in Europe? Who would have thought that uh, the United Kingdom with uh, um, that uh, the United Kingdom could be the friend of France after Napoleon Wars? And I think that everyone now is set to win, and this is what we're doing at the moment. But we can't accept for the moment for a country to be occupied. And the role of the army is to defend territories, countries, domestic territories. We don't want war, but we, unfortunately, we have to, um, to answer. So. Again, yes, we have to leave in two minutes. <laughs> My colleague is going to be very short. Thank you very much, Mr. President. I'm Gina Paluku, the Congolese Minister for the Industry. So a couple of things I wanted to mention. So regarding the efforts that have been made in the country regarding reforms, especially for security. So lots of questions were asked about priorities, but uh, what you may think of is that we have a reputation also to protect. Because if you think that there is no evolution in our country, for example, or no a country which is smart, no, we are smart. And I think you, you saw that. The information to give to you today is that the President of the Republic has uh, found that the problem is also on security, security in the country, and the and for the police, for the departments of justice, where well, we have around 50,000 people who are being trained today. Because before, those in the army 
were 50 years old. So it was not possible to uh, win any war if uh, uh, those in the army were so were so old. So now we've got around 50,000 people, as I said, who are being trained. This is going to be a new army. And the second thing is that the president has also uh, recruited a thousand new magistrates and they are going to be deployed throughout our country to be sure that the rule of law is applied everywhere. And also regarding mining, according to Bloomberg, it has been demonstrated that facing this climate change, electrical batteries can be an alternative, especially with the energy transition. So the idea here is for it's $117 million to produce electrical batteries in the US. And it's $112 million in Poland. So $65 million in Poland. But if we would set such uh, a factory in Congo, it would be around $39 million. So and this is why we need to create a chain of values with uh, Zambia, who is our neighbor, around cobalt, lithium, manganese, and also nickel, so that we can really be boosting the economic development in Africa and to lead for energy transition. This is what I had to say. Thank you very much. I apologize that some of the questions, um, we ran out of time. I do apologize. And uh, um, it was very valuable to have you with us, Your Excellency, for an hour. And you were very good to us in responding very fully to all the questions. Uh, so we do appreciate that very much uh, from you and your colleagues. And um, hope that we will see you, see you again. And shall we um, signal our, our usual appreciation? Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Well, merci, Monsieur le Président. Merci à tous les thank you, Mr. Chair, and thanks to all participants for your attention. Thank you very much, because uh, your questions are also important to us. And I think we'll see each other with Mrs. Alison King as well. I think we'll see each other soon. Thank you very much.